Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. For many teachers, June 17th marked the last day of the regular school term. Well, this also applied to our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School. Unlike many other teachers, however, I had volunteered for summer school duty. The reason? Oh, you can put it down to any one of a number of things. Caprice, the spirit of cooperation, hunger. <laughs> Anyway, I did look forward to a week's vacation before summer school started, so last Friday morning I sat down at the table in Mrs. Davis's dinette and started to count the money I had saved during the past semester. Let's see now. Five, 10, 12, 16, 26. Oh, here's a 50. That's about it. How much money have you got for your vacation, Connie? 76 cents, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> really? Where are you going? Oh, I haven't decided. They say Monte Carlo is lovely this time of year. <laughs> I wish I could let you have some assistance, Connie, but I'm very short myself. Oh, I know. I could let you have the rent money I charged you for the last two weeks. Would you really, Mrs. Davis? Of course I would, Connie. Then I'm sorry I didn't pay it to you. <laughs> Maybe there's some way you can earn some extra money in your spare time, Connie. I remember my brother Victor used to earn quite a bit of vacation money when he was only a boy. How, Mrs. Davis? Shoveling snow. <laughs> Shoveling snow in June? No, in Juno. He spent... <laughs> he spent most of his vacations in Alaska. Oh. Or uh, you might get some ideas out of these magazines here. They're just full of ads telling about spare time jobs. Mm, I'll see them. Mm. Herman Zuko made $6 the first day. At what? Popping corn on his own home popper. <laughs> They send you all the equipment, plus 50 pounds of corn, absolutely free of charge. All you have to do is mail them a deposit. How much? $245. <laughs> I guess that one won't do. No. Oh, here's one. Future Unlimited. Learn to fly in your own home. That's no good either. My room isn't big enough. <laughs> Oh, look at this one, Connie. Let's see. Be the life of the party and earn good money besides. Whose picture is that, Connie? It says, uh, Bride of the Month, Gretchen Cleek, earned $15 playing the banjo at her own wedding. <laughs> <laughs> well... There don't seem to be so many opportunities in this issue, Connie. Well, maybe I'll think of something on my way to school. Walter Denton's picking me up this morning. What's the matter with your car, Connie? I've had a little tire trouble, Mrs. Davis. Well, isn't your spare in good condition? My spare's in perfect condition. It's the other four that are shot. <laughs> How about another cup of coffee, Connie? All right, Mrs. Davis. Meow. Uh, not you, Minerva. You've already had your breakfast. <laughs> the way this cat eats is a caution. She's getting fat as a horse. Good. <laughs> Maybe I can ride her to school one of these days. <laughs> now you go on into the kitchen, Minerva. <laughs> go ahead, Minerva. Yesterday's paper is under the sink with a big fat Mickey Mouse cartoon. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> oh, she's such a pretty thing. Yes, she is. Say, hey, wait a minute. No, I don't suppose her fur would bring much. <laughs> I'll get it. No, I'll get it. I have long arms. 
Good morning, Walter. Come in. Wait. This is not a moment to be passed over lightly. This is an exquisite moment, a delicious moment, a moment to be savored and sipped like a rare old wine. Sorry, bud. We don't serve minors at this bar. <laughs> Come on in, Walter. The sun's heating up the dust in the hall. Don't you realize, Miss Brooks, that there's nothing quite as wonderful as coming face to face with one's teacher on one's last day of school? Oh, yes, there is, Walter. What? The moment when one's teacher turns one's back on one's pupils on the last day of school. <laughs> yes, parting is such sweet sorrow. Well, we won't be parting for long. I volunteered to teach during the summer school term, and your marks have volunteered for you. <laughs> Yes, I know, but it won't be too bad I guess my old pal Stretch will be with me I understand that the marks he got in his final exams weren't so hot uh, By the way, Miss Brooks, how did he do in English? You don't have to worry about Stretch, Walter He made summer school with flying colors <laughs> I was just having a cup of coffee Would you like something to eat before we leave the house? Oh, well, I had my breakfast, Miss Brooks But I can always nibble Good Come into the dinette, Walter Good morning, Mrs. Davis Good morning, Walter can I fix you something? Uh, would ham and eggs be too much trouble? That ought to make a nice nibble. <laughs> I'll fix them for you in a jiffy, Walter. What kind of bread do you want? Oh, what have you got? White, rye, and whole wheat. That'll be fine. <laughs> this kid eats like a cat. Well, Miss Brooks, how are you going to spend all the next week? Oh, I may not spend all of it, Walter. I'll probably save some. <laughs> That is, I couldn't think of going away anywhere until I recuperate. Recuperate? From what, Miss Brooks? From an ancient malady, Walter. It's called teacher's blight. Gosh, how long have you had that? It's just setting in. The symptoms are always the same. First, a hollow feeling in the pit of the pocketbook, followed by a general tightening of the purse strings. In a word, you're broke? In three words, yes, darn it. <laughs> That isn't anything to be too desperate about, Miss Brooks Being broke isn't so bad if you've got friends I know, Walter, but it's just as nice to be rich and have friends <laughs> Yeah, that's true, too But let's pursue this matter further In order to effect a cure, we must first find the cause of the ailment Go ahead, Doctor At present, you are without funds, correct? Correct Hence, you must have spent what funds you possessed on something other than that Which you'd like to have said funds available for now, mustn't you? <laughs> It'll take more than summer school to straighten out that sentence <laughs> Go ahead, Walter oh, What I mean, Miss Brooks, is that you haven't enough money for a vacation now Because of the way you let it slip through your fingers earlier in the season You're right, Walter I could have afforded a wonderful week in the country If I hadn't frittered away all my earnings on food and rent <laughs> Here you are, Walter Here's some nice scrambled ham and baked eggs <laughs> Beg pardon? It's a brand new recipe I've discovered. It's called ham and eggs country style. In what country? <laughs> if you'll excuse me, Walter, I'd like to look through some more of these magazines while you're eating. I've been trying to find some way to make some money in my spare time. Well, gosh, why didn't you say so, Miss Brooks? She just did, Walter. But there doesn't seem to be anything worthwhile. You mean you really want to work at something other than teaching, Miss Brooks? During my free time, yes Well, then I may have just the thing for you You see, I'm trying to raise some extra money too, Miss Brooks And I'd be happy to... Oh, no No, first I've got to get permission from my partners Your partners? Yeah, Stretch Snodgrass and Harriet Conklin Oh, but I'm sure they'll be glad to have you with us With you in what, Walter? Well, it's very confidential I won't breathe a word of it, Walter Word of honor, Mrs. Davis? Word of honor Honestly, Miss Brooks, this thing is terrific What thing is terrific? It's just a gold mine. Give me a map and a shovel, and I'll meet you there at midnight. <laughs> now, come on, Walter. You've had me in suspense long enough. What is this fabulous sideline I'm getting into? Well, I'd rather not say until we talk to Stretch and Harriet, but I'm going to pick them up on our way to school. They're waiting in the pet shop that Stretch's dad runs. Oh, oh that, that reminds me. I've got to feed Minerva. Say, that's right. The poor thing hasn't had a square meal in ten minutes. <laughs> I'll take care of everything, Connie You run along with Walter And I wish you both a lot of luck in your new enterprise Thanks, Mrs. Davis Well, we better be going, Miss Brooks All right, Walter But you'll have to give me a few minutes to fix up After all, if we're going to the Snodgrass Pet Shop I want to look my best 
You mean when you meet your new business associates? Not entirely, Walter. There's a monkey in there who has a crush on me. <laughs> a monkey? Yes. Stretch once read him Tarzan of the Apes, and he thinks I'm Jane. <laughs> Starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Here's wonderful news, ladies. Wonderful, wonderful news. Now there's something thrillingly new in Palm Olive Soap's famous beauty lather. Yes, something thrillingly new. Palm Olive's famous beauty lather now brings you new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Millions of women will prefer beauty lather Palm Olive over all other leading toilet soaps the minute they try it. For Palm Olive Soap's famous beauty lather, now has a new, clean, flower-fresh fragrance for new allure, new charm. So, ladies, forget all other beauty care and use palm olive soap the way doctors advised for a lovelier complexion. Just stop improper cleansing and instead wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day, massaging palm olive's wonderful beauty lather onto your skin for 60 seconds each time to get its full beautifying effect. Then rinse. That's all. All types of skin, young, older, oily, respond to it quickly. Don't wait another day to try Palm Olive's Beauty Lather. You'll be thrilled by its new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Thrilled again by the fresher, brighter complexion doctors prove may soon be yours. For new loveliness all over, use big bath size Palm Olive in tub or shower. <laughs> Driving downtown with Walter Denton is always an invigorating experience. It's great practice for underwater swimming, too. At one point during our ride, I held my breath for three straight blocks. When we finally arrived at our destination, I made a mental note to send a generous contribution to the League for Frightened Pedestrians. <laughs> well, here's the pet shop, Miss Brooks. It better be. A jewelry store would look pretty silly with all those puppies in the window. Oh, aren't they cute, Walter? What's that St. Bernard doing in there? No, that's Stretch. Oh. <laughs> now, come on, let's go in. Hiya, Stretch, it's me. Oh, hi, Walter. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Stretch. Where's your dad? Oh, he'll be down later. I opened the shop today. I was just feeding the animals. How about Harriet? She had breakfast at home. <laughs> oh, you mean where is she at? Oh, she's in back examining some of our equipment. Oh, let's go back. We gotta vote Miss Brooks into the business. No kidding. Is Miss Brooks coming in with us? Well, that depends on if she still wants to after she hears what it is. It also depends on if I'm not too old when I hear what it is. Well, it's about time you... Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. Good morning, Harriet. It was my fault Walter's late. We were discussing the possibilities of my joining your new enterprise. Our enterprise? Yes, the one that's well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> is it okay with you, Harriet? Miss Brooks will make a wonderful contact man for us. Yeah, she sure will. A swell contact man. Of course, I'll feel a little foolish in this dress. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm all for it, of course, but... Well, do you know what the business is, Miss Brooks? No. It's taxidermy. Taxidermy? Yeah, you know, where you stuff stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not just any stuff. Birds and animals and things like that that people grow attached to. Well, I don't know, kids. Oh, I don't think to that... it, Miss Brooks. My dad is furnishing all the equipment. He used to be in that business, you know. It's really a public service, Miss Brooks. Like when old Mr. Phillips, you know, the man who has the farm right nearby? Well, one of his pet oxen died and he felt terrible till Stretch's dad fixed him up. Sure. Now the ox is still standing in his stall out in the barn and, and Mr. Phillips can run in and see him every once in a while. He's exactly like when he was alive. Without the pulling power, of course. <laughs> it's a great business, Miss Brooks. And just think, you don't have to ha make any investment. All you need is an apron and something sharp. But you better think it over, Miss Brooks. Taxidermy may not be a dignified enough avocation for a school teacher. Well, I'm afraid Harriet's right. Besides, I wouldn't want to deplete your share of the earnings. I imagine there isn't too much money in it. Well, with the orders we got in already, we should gross almost $100. Plus some swell leads that you could follow up as a contact man. Sure. Altogether, we'll clear about $50 a piece. Did you say $50? Sure. Stretch. Yes, Miss Brooks? Throw me an apron, an ox, and something sharp. <laughs> Although a little 
dubious about my new extracurricular activity, Stuffing Stuff Incorporated, I was determined to raise some extra money. I got my first opportunity as a taxidermy salesman during lunch period. Oh, excuse me, Miss Brooks, but I've got a wonderful lead for our new business. Really, Harriet? Who is it? My father. Your father? But you've got a moose head in your living room now. <laughs> you mean uh, he wants something stuffed? I happen to know that he caught a fish up at Crystal Lake yesterday, and he's entering it in his fishing club's annual contest this afternoon. Maybe you can sell him the idea of having it mounted. But why me? Why don't you sell him the idea? Because coming from me, the whole thing would seem like kid stuff to Daddy. But with you handling it, the whole project takes on weight. I guess this girdle has given up the ghost. <laughs> Look, Harriet, your father's a pretty tough customer, and I'm not the logical contender. You shouldn't be afraid of Daddy, Miss Brooks. His bark is much worse than his bite. I don't know about that. A bite you can have cauterized. <laughs> Please, Miss Brooks. Well, this is a great opportunity to get our business off to a flying start. Why, did he catch a flying fish? Please. <laughs> Say you'll take a crack at Daddy. Well, if you'll get somebody to hold him, I'll... I mean, <laughs> if you think I ought to, Harriet, I'll talk to your father. Is he having lunch in the cafeteria? No, Miss Brooks. Since he went fishing yesterday, he can't stand the sight of food, so he's taken a baked apple to his office. Now, go ahead, Miss Brooks. Beard the lion in his den. All right, Harriet, I'll try to beard the lion, but I'd feel a lot better if I'd once removed a thorn from his paw. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Conklin. Could I see you for a moment? I suppose so, Miss Brooks. Have a seat. I'm trying to get this baked apple down. <laughs> Who won the first fall? <laughs> I, I heard you were a little upset lately. Yes, yes, ever since my little expedition to Crystal Lake yesterday. But it was worth it, Miss Brooks. I landed a beauty, even though the lake got pretty rough for a while there. Oh, I know the feeling, Mr. Conklin. The last time I went fishing, it got pretty choppy. I'll never forget how that boat pitched and rolled and pitched and rolled. Oh, no. <laughs> if you don't mind, Miss Brooks, I wish you'd postpone the recital of your experience at sea <laughs> until I've had another go at this baked apple. Oh, of course, Mr. Conklin. What I wanted to talk to you about was that beauty you hauled in yesterday. Now, you must admit, Mr. Conklin, that there's nothing quite as unprepossessing as a dead fish. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brooks, there must be something else we can chat about. Oh, this is important, Mr. Conklin. Do you realize that I can transform into a vibrant, beautiful object what is now nothing but a cold, gray, sodden mass? How, you ask? I do not. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Taxidermy, Mr. Conklin. Take Mr. Phillips, the farmer. Months after it passed away, Mr. Phillips could still go out to his barn and see his pet ox standing there. Well, bully for him. <laughs> now for another try at this baked apple. Mr. Conklin, I'm afraid you underestimate the importance of taxidermy. Have you any idea of what it takes to stuff an ox? Miss Brooks, would you like this baked apple? No, thanks, Mr. Conklin. I just had some stuffed peppers for lunch. Naturally. <laughs> now, what is all this nonsense about taxidermy? Well, frankly, Mr. Conklin, I'm trying to earn a little extra money in my spare time. But, Miss Brooks, taxidermy. Your fish will make a wonderful trophy. Especially if it wins the contest this afternoon. But I'm not at all sure it will win the contest. It's only a 29-inch bass. L last year, it took a 32-incher to win. Well, then you should turn the fish over to us before the contest. Taxidermy will make it even larger. I'm surprised at you, Miss Brooks. Stuffing fish. You, a public educator, stooping to such... to such... larger... <laughs> Inches larger. You'll find the speckled beauty in the cafeteria refrigerator. <laughs> 
It's roomier than the one we have at home. Oh, thank you, Mr. Conklin. You won't be sorry. The club is meeting at my home at five sharp. You're sure you can have it there by then? Positive, Mr. Conklin. Very well. Oh, one more thing, Miss Brooks. What is it going to cost me to stuff my fish? Shall we say a fin, Mr. Conklin? <laughs> I'm home. I'm in the kitchen, Connie. Then we're bound to run into each other. That's where this bass and I are headed. Well, here we are, Mrs. Davis. Oh, hello, Connie. I was just... Who's that with you? <laughs> this is a 29-inch bass, which is about to be preserved for Mr. Conklin and posterity. Oh, hello, Minerva. She's hungry again. But so far, I haven't given in to her. I don't like the way she stuffs herself lately. Me either. It isn't fair to us taxidermists. <laughs> now, let me put this fish in the icebox till the kids get here, hmm? There. That ought to keep until my business associates arrive. Your business associates? Harriet, Walter, and Stretch. I'm sales manager of Stuffing Stuff Incorporated. I just put my first client in the icebox. Mr. Conklin's commissioned us to have his fish mounted. What a charming notion. Now, if you'll excuse me, dear, I've got some shopping to do. I was on my way out the back door when you came in. Certainly, Mrs. Davis. Oh, is it all right if we use the kitchen for a little while? Of course, dear. Just help yourself. Goodbye. Bye, Mrs. Davis. We're stuffing Mr. Conklin's bass. Hooray, hooray. <laughs> Coming. Well, here we are, Miss Brooks. Yep, here we are. Come in, boys. Where's Harriet? Well, she didn't come, Miss Brooks. She says she'd rather sit this part of the business out. It gets kind of gooky. <laughs> I think I'll sit with her. Why are you all the equipment here, Miss Brooks? Where's the subject? Back in the kitchen. Just follow me. It's a pretty good-sized fish, boys. I hope it doesn't take too long to do the job. Oh, it'll just be a few minutes, Miss Brooks. Oh, nothing to it. Old Stretch just takes out his pointy knife and then... And never mind the details, he Walter. Sticks it and... uh, the fish is in the icebox here. Oh, now, that's funny. I put it right on the bottom shelf. Well, isn't there now? Meow, meow. <laughs> Look at Minerva. She looks like the cat that swallowed the canary. She looks like the cat that swallowed the canary that swallowed the bass. <laughs> Look, Miss Brooks. Look at this skeleton over here in the corner. What's it doing out of my closet? It's all that's left of the fish. Gosh, I can't stuff a skeleton. Oh, this is... <laughs> Simply terrible, boys. Mr. Conklin's fishing club's meeting at his home in a couple of hours. Oh, Minerva, how could you do this to me? Meow. The way you eat, you should oink instead of meowing. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it serves you right. Now get out of this kitchen before I paste some fins on you and put you on a board. Meow, meow, meow. What are you doing, Miss Brooks? There's only one thing we can do. You kids will have to run down to Hersh's Market and buy the closest thing to a 29-inch bass that they've got. Oh, great, Miss Brooks. And Mr. Conklin will never know the difference. I hope not. Now hurry. Come on, Stretch. Okay, Walter. Oh, just one thing, Miss Brooks. What color fish should we ask for? Color? Ask for, I don't know, bass color, I guess. <laughs> Well, here we are, Miss Brooks. I put him on the kitchen table here, Stretch. Okay, Walter. There. I think the first thing to do is spray him with a bottle of sweet air. <laughs> Wait a minute. He doesn't look as big as the one Mr. Conklin caught. Oh, don't worry about that, Miss Brooks. We bought a football bladder and a tire pump, too. It was Walter's idea. That's what it sounds like. Sure. We just stick the bladder in him and pump him up till he's the right size. But isn't that dangerous? Not if we're careful. Come on, Stretch. Let's get started. Okay, Walter. Flashlight. Flashlight. Hammer. Hammer. Ice pick. Smelling salts. <laughs> Don't look at this part, Miss Brooks. Don't worry, I won't. There. The rubber bladder's in. Now start pumping. <laughs> there. Think that's enough air, Miss Brooks? Enough. If his eyes pop out any further, we'll be sued by Eddie Cantor. <laughs> And so, fellow members of the fishing club, it is with a good deal of pride that I accept this blue ribbon for my entry in the annual contest. 
If you'll just hold the fish up, Miss Brooks, I'd like to pin this ribbon right on his gleaming side. Pin it? Oh, but Mr. Conklin, I wouldn't advise Ah, you there to... we are. In you go. <laughs> Caviar, anyone? Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumit's magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream, not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream. Girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, the fish blew up, followed shortly afterwards by Mr. Conklin. <laughs> <laughs> Thus ended the career of Constance Brooks, girl taxidermist. <laughs> I was still determined to find some outside source of income. So when I arrived home, I started looking through the magazines once again. Well, Connie, have you made any vacation money as yet? No, I haven't, thanks to that hoggish cat of ours. Wait a minute, I've got it. What, Connie? The perfect business. Make violins in your own home. I'm going to start immediately. But, Connie, you haven't got any of the equipment. Oh, no? Here, Minerva, here, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks Show, brought to you by Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Leonard Smith. <laughs> Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Palm Olive shaving cream comes both ways. And whichever way you prefer to shave, you'll find that using either Palm Olive brushless or Palm Olive lather shaving cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new Palm Olive way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palm Olive Brushless or Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Life with Luigi, which follows over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>